Hey everybody, what's up? It's Chase. Welcome to another episode of the Chase Jarvis Live Show here on Creative Live. You know that show where I sit down with amazing humans. I unpack their brain with the goal of helping you live your dreams. Today's guest is Dr. Mark Harper. Now, Dr. Harper, like many people that have been on this show and you've heard out there in popular culture, are advocates for cold water immersion. Now, before you skip on to the next video, so I don't want anything to do with cold water. If you knew that cold water could alleviate not just chronic pain and arthritis, but anxiety, depression, PTSD, migraines, and more. Would you stick around? Not the least of which the top performers in the world, most of them have some experience with cold water immersion. Dr. Mark Harper does a fantastic job of introducing you, if it's new to you, this concept. And if you're a practitioner already, we'll add some context to why it's actually helpful and share some amazing stories. So I'm going to get out of the way. Yours truly, Dr. Mark Harper, all about cold water. Dr. Mark Harper, thank you very much for being on the show today. Really appreciate you joining us. That's a real pleasure. I look forward to it. Well, the reason that you're on the show is because as this audience knows, I am very obsessed with the benefits of cold water. I first became a, a, accustomed to it a few, probably a decade ago with some polar plunges on New Year's Day with friends, and it has become a big part of my life. And we uh, are excited to have you on the show. Of for lots of reasons, not the least of which is your new book called Chill, the Cold Water Swim Cure. But more importantly, the idea of cold water as medically, scientifically proven to be beneficial to our health. So without further ado, and if you would, please tell us a little bit about your backstory, aside from just the cold water bit, just orient us and the, the audience here listening today around who you are, where you spend your time and energy, what you care about, and uh, and then we'll get into some of the specifics. Yeah, well, I guess I, I came to cold water swimming through two routes, really. The first was skiing, in fact, and uh, that was because I, I decided as part of my medical career, part of my medical training, instead of going straight through the whole process, I decided to take six months off, go and work in a French ski resort. Nothing medical, just as a, as a holiday rep, do, do loads of skiing. And uh, just before I left, the, the director of the training program rang me and said, uh, yeah, we're, we're advertising for the, the next level of jobs. I think you should apply. I said, Ernie, I'm really flattered, but I'm, I'm going to take six months off and go skiing. He said, it's not going to advance your career very much. Ironically, it has had no, nothing has had a greater effect on my, on my whole career than taking those six months off. He's a really nice guy. <laughs> There's another lesson in there that I definitely want to talk about. Um, but sorry for interrupting. I think this is fascinating. So you, you got uh, you said, I'm out of here. I'm going to France to uh, ski, obviously, in cold weather. And sorry, keep going. Yeah, so anyway, so I mean, he's a really nice guy. He, he did it in the nicest possible way. And, and the night before we went, it was the days when they were still, uh, you still had you know, sponsored uh, drug companies sponsored you. For, uh, for an evening out. And he came up to me. We both both had our fair share. And he came up to me at the end of the evening and said, I think you should organize a meeting in a ski resort and uh, yeah, an anesthetic meeting in a ski resort. So I said, okay. I don't think he really thought I would. But the next year, we started running a, an annual conference in the ski resort. And it's still running. You know, Given two years of COVID, it hasn't. But it's still going 20 odd years later. But the reason why that had the effect was the first year I thought I had to give a talk. And I thought, well, what do I talk about? And I thought, ah, hypothermia, that seems like a, a reasonable thing to think about. You know, it's uh, appropriate and altitude and things like that. And so I just gave a talk. I picked up some of the literature on uh, hypothermia because this is it. When you swim, uh, no, when you have an operation, you tend to get cold. You know, your body thermoregulation closes down. And becoming hypothermic is always bad for you. If you go in the water and become hypothermic, and this is, I think, is a really important point, that's actually bad for you. Exposing yourself to the cold, good, but we'll come on to that. And anyway, so I started 
you know, after that, I started doing research into it eventually. And, and that's where my PhD comes from, is stopping people getting cold uh, during their operation, because that reduces the number of complications they suffer. But as part of this, as I was doing my research into this, I kept coming across articles from uh, someone I'm sure you've heard of, Mo- Professor Mike Tipton from Portsmouth. He's done all the cold adaptation stuff. I mean, he's, uh, yeah, he's a, a great guy, great researcher. And it was all about uh, cold adaptation. Now, so I'll come back to that because in the meantime, yeah, you know, I've always swum. I've always been a pool swimmer, you know, uh, trained competitively. I still still swim in the pool with the club, you know, three, four thousand meters, two or three times a week. And but I but one summer the the pool uh, as usual the pool shut down. I was complaining to a really old friend of mine, you know, oh, there's no swimming in the pool, and it's a bit boring. So ah, go and swim in the sea. The club's got a sea swimming section. I didn't even realise they did have. I thought, well, well when do they swim? Uh, seven o'clock. Well, yeah, when? But what what days? Well, all oh, year. So I was as shocked as everyone else at this point. And anyway, I intended to start uh, swimming for that. Just swim for those two weeks in Brighton, bit in the ocean, and uh, and then nearly twenty years later, here I am still doing it. But then, as part of that, the first uh, that first swim I had, you know, the day after I uh, chatted to Jasper, the uh, yeah, I remember sort of I had my swim. I walked up the beach. I thought, God, this feels good, you know. And and you know, it wasn't cold. I mean, it was probably twenty degrees centigrade. What's that? Sixty eight Fahrenheit. So not really cold. And so I start. Uh, then I sort of. To come back to the hypothermia, the perioptive hypothermia thing, I came back and said, well, you know, what I'm reading about here is that getting into cold water is a stress. And so, and that stress is having the same effect on the body as operations have. Because, you know, although you get an anaesthetic and hopefully I give a give you an anaesthetic so you don't feel anything and you don't have any pain you know, during the operation your, your body still reacts as if it's a massive stress you know much uh, you know, a, a you know, really big stress on the body and what i also found from mike's work was that it was reducing you know if you got used to swimming in cold water it actually reduced this stress response now we need a stress response but we don't want too much of it. We want to keep it in the good physiological zone, not the bad pathological zone. And that's what happens when you have an operation. And so I thought, well, if you reduce that by cold water swimming, perhaps you can reduce the stress of surgery by cold water swimming and thereby reduce the number of complications. So sadly, I haven't actually done the study, but I've ri- I wrote a paper and published a paper outlining my theory and that's where it kind of came together. That's kind of the backstory. Well, it seems to me, I'm just going to summarize. You were a doctor interested in the effects and preventing the effects, the, the negative effects of the body losing temperature, losing temperature regulation during surgery. It gets very cold. There's harmful stuff. And Yet when you personally swam and you realize this is a stressor, it's a low weight stressor, but that low weight stressor, not dissimilar maybe to like doing bicep curls every day can over time make you stronger and more resilient. Is that a fair summary? Completely. It's exactly the same as doing, you know, it's a, as doing exercise. You're exercising your cold tolerance, you know, whatever. Okay. The, the, to- the, the what I find fascinating is now all of the downstream benefits that is becoming known based on your research, the research of your colleague in Portsmouth, other folks like Vim Hoff, who've also been on the show and and have popularized, you know, this extreme cold water. Um, Let's go now to your own experience. Let's go back to swimming in the sea. You got out. It was, you know, it's like mild by cold water concepts. Maybe would you say it's about 68 degrees Fahrenheit or something, 70 but that's still very cold relative to a body that's 98.6. So you get out, you feel a buzz. You say, gosh, there's something to this. Take us then from, hey, maybe there's something to this to your own experience. And what does the research start to say about this cold exposure 
over time, sustained low level stress, how does it help us? Well, I think the kind of the next stage in the process of the development of my thought was, it came a few years later uh, when I was uh, sitting in the pub, actually. You know, again, this is another thing, like you go skiing, yeah, something comes out of it. You, you go and sit in the pub, read a paper. And, and that was it. I was reading the newspaper, not, nothing scientific. And I read this article which said that depression, you know, it, it said, you know, depression is perhaps an allergic reaction and that it was, there was a lot of depression was related to inflammation. Now, the kind of the main way in which the cold adaptation works is, you know, has these positive effects or, you know, certainly what I was thinking about with surgery was, in reducing the levels of inflammation. Again, like stress, it's something we need. It's our body's first line of defense against injury and infection, but we don't want too much of it. And we want it when it's needed, not a whole time. When we have it the whole time, it's bad for you. So I thought, well, first of all, you know, we've got cold water swimming and we know or cold water adaptation, and we know that reduces inflammation. Then I know how good I feel after I've had a swim and I'm not even depressed. So maybe we could use cold water swimming to treat depression. And then that is where uh, Mike comes in again. So I hadn't met him at this point, but uh, by a series of events, I ended up meeting him a, a couple of months later and I put this theory to him and he said, do you know what? I think that's a really, yeah, it's a really good theory. And a couple of months after that, he was contacted by uh, one of our British TV doctors, Chris Van Turbica, and he said, look, I'm doing this program called The Doctor Who Gave Up Drugs. Is there anything we can use cold water swimming to treat? And he said, well, funny you should say that because I've just met this guy who has a theory that it could be used to treat depression. And so from that, yeah, we did this uh, BBC television program and we found this uh, rather amazing young woman, Sarah, 24 years old, been on antidepressants since she was 16, father had committed suicide, brother died of a drug overdose, she was a single mum, but she really didn't want to see her daughter grow up seeing her mum take take pills to, to sort herself out. So so yeah, we took her, took her to Mike's lab, adapted her to the cold, took her for a swim the next day, and then Chris followed her up and Within a few months, she was off the pills. And when I last had contact with her, which was just before Christmas, she, you know, several years later, she's still off the pills and still swimming. All right. So let's, I'd like to separate the swimming part from the cold water exposure because theoretically exercise is also good for, you know, relieving depression. It releases, an, uh, releases you know, some chemicals that we like. There's some endorphins when we exercise. I want to focus, if we can, specifically on coal. I think that story is incredible. Um, I'm going to share just for 30 seconds here my personal experience with it, and I'm wondering if you can sort of connect the dots. What uh, Sarah went, you know, someone who was clinically depressed at the time, um, and and my experience, and I think there's some fabric there, but I'm going to ask you to do that work, and maybe even I still am hanging on to that bit you said earlier in the broadcast with like you got out of the cold water and you like, wow, I feel great. I'm not depressed, but I feel great. So my, again, my early experiences were on new year's day after a night of partying with friends. Um, we, or we have a tradition in my family and I'm with a bunch of friends to go to this, uh, some islands off the coast of Washington, Seattle here. It's very cold, cold water. It's the middle of the winter. Everyone's kind of hung over from staying up late the night before you get in, you get out, you're instantly wide awake. You know, there's all kinds of uh, good chemi chemistry falling through your body. And it, I did that a couple of times over the course of a number of years. And then I started doing it not on New Year's. And it wasn't just, you know, these are times where then I wasn't hung over or for example, I hadn't stayed up all night and I felt the same or better. And there is this electric feeling, a feeling that's equivalent to like better than caffeine, all natural. And my body actually felt warm 
after getting out. There's like this flush feeling after getting out. And I then started experimenting and saying, if this is something that's reproducible just in my little, you know, my little beach town here, uh, started looking into the research, realized that it was actually a thing and then made it a daily practice and incorporated cold showers when I wasn't there up at the shore, up at the beach. And lo and behold, while the shower couldn't get quite as cold as the the sea up in that part of the world, which is less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit almost year round. So it's quite cold. I, I wouldn't say became addicted, but I was, it was very clear to me that the chemistry that was in my, that my, my own body was producing as a result of this. I noticed after some time that I stopped getting sick. I went multiple years without catching a cold. I overall felt it was at a very difficult work time. There was a ton of work working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. That the, the, the pressure, pressure and the stressors from that seemed to moderate or dissipate. Now, this is my personal experience. You know, you talked the, the, the uh, early chapters of your book, one is called my cold water epiphanies. And the second is the felt experience of cold water. So I'm clearly in this camp. Can you explain to us, you just told this beautiful story about cold water, you know, uh, being an, an antiseptic, if you will, to, to um, Sarah's depression. Tell everybody who's listening, what I was experiencing, what are, what's the neurochemistry that's going on? Why did I feel better? And how could perhaps they adopt the similar, a similar practice that would yield similar benefits? Well, it's a big question. I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll, I'll try and stay focused and see what I can. So at the very basic level, say, or at the basic physiological level, start with that. So what you do when you, your body go, when you put your body into cold water, you are, you know, exposing yourself to stress. You're setting off this massive sympathetic reaction. The fight flight response is totally engaged as you go into the into the water. And water is very cold, if you see what I mean. You know, uh, and I'll talk about a bit about the physics. I mean, the, the physics of water is uh, is fascinating. It's got a really high what we call spe- spe- specific heat capacity. So it's got this ability to just draw cold out of you, and this is why you get into or I suppose you, you think of it the other way. If you put your hand into 100 degree water, it's, oh my God, you know, yeah, boiling point. That's, uh, that's dreadful. You put your hand in an oven, which is at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just, uh, it's no, no bother at all. So it's a, it's a big thermal stress is what you're getting from the water. And that sets off this big sympathetic reaction. And what you get with that is you get things like, well, do you know, yeah, we, we, we're not really sure. We make there's a lot of speculation about what is released and what isn't released. But I think that the big headline ones for me are that the adrenaline and the noradrenaline that uh, that are set off, and that you get big doses of this. And this is essentially that's what you get from cocaine. Yeah, you, know, you get a bit of dopamine, a bit of all kinds of stuff. But you know that is you know cocaine is set sets off your uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline. Uh, it's interesting when. When we started the swimming with Chris, the TV swimming, so he hadn't done it before and he sort of joined in. And he said to me after the first time, God, if this was a drug, they'd make it illegal. And uh, you know, that kind of sums it up, doesn't it? Uh, and I think that's the, that's the big thing about it. You just get the high, and I think you touched upon it. It's a natural high as well. You know, your body has control over this. It's not going to overdo it. And what it has is these feedback mechanisms which mean that you know it brings it back to to a, a workable level so i think that's the the really basic physiology and yeah how why you feel so good there's also you know i think there's stuff that we can't really explain and you know certainly for me you know, you talk about the working the long hours and you know i i, I totally get get where you're you're, you're coming from with that so there's a, a fantastic story, uh, you're probably aware of it, Jill Bolt-Taylor, who is a, was a neuroscientist, uh, is a neuroscientist who had a stroke, and she's done a 25 million plus TED Talk about this and a, a book called uh, My Stroke of Insight, I think it is. And what she described, so she had this stroke and she woke up one day and said she realized she was having a stroke, but she didn't care. You know, she said, I'm having this and, and yeah, she just didn't care. And she, 
And what it was, and this was this was actually interesting, is with the area she was researching. What it was is that stroke. The she had a big bleed on the left hand side of her brain. Now, the left hand side of your brain is the one that is our sense of self. It's our worries. It's our fear. It's our, all that chatter, and it was pushing on that. So that side of the brain wasn't working. The right hand side of the brain still was, and that's our sense of empathy, our sense of being one with the world, and you know, just general love of, of, of stuff. And so she, that's what she had. And since then, you know, she's gone on to you know her her motivation for getting you know six years of recovery after that. Her motivation was, you know, I want to help people take a step to the right. And you don't just need to use cold water. You know, you can use meditation. You can, yeah, you know, there are all kinds of other things, you know, breathing techniques. But certainly what I find is, you know, I've going to cycle 10 miles to work. And just before I get to work, there's a, there's a, a little, a little lake. And, you know, I, I get there, I, I, my head's full of chatter. I'm hot, you know, I'm sweaty, I'm all that. I get into the lake and, and then, you know, I come out minutes later, it's not a long swim, and minutes later, and I am at one with the world. I can feel this. This is empathy. It's like, oh, this feels so good. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, and that's kind of apart from the buzz, that's this taking a step to the taking a step to the right. And yeah, recently I was just reflecting on this, and I think what has happened over time is that it's shifted me completely because I find I, I thought I was reflecting, I'm thinking, actually, I'm just I've never been a particularly highly stressed person, but I'm even less stressed these days. And I can go, I can put up with whatever, and it doesn't doesn't really phase me out. It's uh, you know, I obviously I have emotions and uh, I have good days and bad days and all that. But yeah, life is just a bit calmer. You know, having maybe having done it for years, I'm speculating, but you know. It, just describes for me i'd be interested to know what you thought it just describes for me what happens yeah I, I i well part of when i got your book again for those who are interested it's called a transformative guide to renew your body and mind chill the cold water swim cure and you know when i first picked it up i'm looking and the, some of the stories in there are they mirror you know, I, I haven't had, knock on wood, serious health concerns prior to my exposure, but a lot of, you know, you, you go through, um, there are treatments, for example, for chronic pain. And this is, I think this is worth listening to now very closely. If you are, if you find yourself suffering from any of these maladies, you know, then Mark's book is going to help be helpful to you. Chronic pain in any way, migraines, fibromyalgia with, which is just overall, you know, body pain that is is very difficult to diagnose where it comes from and why any autoimmune diseases trauma or post traumatic stress disorder depression mental health challenges so if any of those things fall in your camp <clears throat> your own human experience I, I i have had some of those i have I had a ptsd experience uh it was i think too premature um and too long ago rather to for me to ascertain whether or not the cold water helped treat it but when I'm looking at this book and I'm reading, there are phrases that I've got captured here. I feel happy. These are reports from individuals. I feel happy. I feel strong. I feel whole. This helps me feel grounded and strong. Uh, I'm alert, alive, and have a sense of euphoria and achievement. Now, you see, just I know feel- that one because sure. what gets me about that one, that's, um, that's from um, Martin, who's the guy with fibromyalgia. Yeah. And you know, what strikes me every time I read that is, you know, you don't get that from a pill. You know, yeah. you take a pill, you know, you say, I have, I've got this real sense of achievement. I've taken the pill. And, but you know, you get it from, from swimming in the, in the cold water. Yeah. One more. It just feels like heaven. I'm recovering myself in the sea. So I think the the connection between these maladies and the reports that people have, you know, that they share after experiencing cold water, this is why I'm, you know, so maybe freakishly passionate about it, passionate about it. And not dissimilar to you, I, I didn't find myself, the reason I started cold water therapy was not because I was suffering. It was because I completely stumbled into it. 
And yet the benefits, I can undoubtedly say that my life is better. Now, I got a text, uh, <clears throat> a friend of mine, I've been trying to talk into cold water. And he said, took my first cold water shower today. And wow, I feel incredible. And, you know, I, I love receiving those messages. There's something that I want to shift our attention to now real quick, which is this idea of achievement that you mentioned from, was it Martin, who is the yeah, sufferer Martin, of fibromyalgia? Yeah. I have recognized that there's not one time where I am prior to getting in 48 or 50 degree water. And now I have, I have an actual cold plunge at my house here that is, you know, it is operates its sole purpose in life is to make me cold. Yeah. And it sits right <laughs> next to a hot tub whose sole purpose is to make me you know, warm. And I contrast those, uh, yeah. which, which increases the effect, but there's not one time where I'm just about to get in that icy cold water where I say, Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be so good. I'm usually like, okay, here we go again. And what I recognize, and this is probably similar to Martin's feelings of achievement is that it's not a negotiation. I am just doing this because I have done it enough to know that there are benefits. It's sort of like going to the gym. And when I get out, I 100% of the time feel something, feel a euphoria, feel a connection, feel that I've done something. And I haven't negotiated. This is where self-confidence comes from. If you make promises to yourself and you repeatedly keep those promises, this is an example. So now, like, I, I can't think of not doing it. And I, I, what I believe, and I'd like to hear your comment on this, this is the, the punchline to my rambling here, is I have become comfortable being uncomfortable. And now I find that a, a vector that's more easily reconciled in other areas of my life. If I'm going into an uncomfortable conversation at work or uh, an experience where I know it's going to be slightly unpleasant, whether that's medical or surgical, or uh, I am better at those moments in life, which as you indicated earlier, you have an overall more <laughs> pun intended, you're more chill. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, sharing my own story and I'm wondering if you can, is there any mechanism to what I'm asking about, or is it all sort of anecdotal and just experiential? this, this connection, this, uh, these feelings of, you know, feeling like heaven, a for, euphoria and achievement of putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation to get more comfortable overall. Well, I mean, again, there's, there's a, there's a lot to, uh, to unpack, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, unpack that's there. on purpose, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, Basic biological mechanisms, I don't think we can go down there. But what we can say is, you know, there's lots of stuff, as you said earlier, exercise is good for you. You know, we know getting out in nature is good for you. You're getting all these things. You've just got a, a kind of poly pill, a package of of benefits. And, you know, it's it's stressful. So post-traumatic stress, and you know, people talk about post-traumatic stress, and yes, it's a real thing, but people don't focus so much on post-traumatic growth. And that's kind of what you're getting, I think, by going in the sea. That's quite a good analogy to the effect. You know, every time you go in, you come out and you've achieved it. And a, a lot of these people who've come to our courses have, you know, a, another repeated thing that comes back is that I've, you know, this is the, in fact, Sarah said, oh, this is probably the most, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. You know, it's, it is. It's a challenge. It is a brutal challenge. And the fact that when you still go in, and I absolutely the same, I go in, it's a real challenge to get in when it's, you know, uh, you know, middle of winter, it, the rain's coming down and, you know, it's cold, oh, you know, dark. Uh, but I know that when I come out the other side, I'm going to feel so good. And that's what gets me in. And then every day I have had, I've achieved that at the beginning. And then I get those, those great effects coming out. Mm. I've, I have, um, your, your book mostly focuses on the sea and swimming, understandably. Um, I am assuming I have experienced this personally, but I am hoping to hear from you, the doctor, that while you don't get all of the benefits from taking a cold shower because a not everybody lives on the sea and b um you know not everybody has 20 minutes to go for a swim or whatever but 
can you confirm that you know after taking a normal shower and standing under the coldest water that you can create in your own house environment for say three minutes on the back of your neck your head your face chest that there is an at least an, a similar analogous maybe slightly less but there's a, a benefit there as well yes i reasonable? can confirm that so yeah okay. what you get from the 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 stress response that you get is down to two things. It's one, the, the absolute temperature of the water, and two, it's the rate of cooling. So the thing about a shower is it's not quite as cold as the water, but it is colder than you. And so, you know, so it's, the water's not quite as cold. It might be as cold depending on where your shower is coming from, but that's one thing, but it's still enough to have an effect. And the other is the rate of cooling, because if you get into a, a bath of the same temperature for example that will have a more rapid cooling effect because you're exposing your whole body rather than just kind of intermittently so it doesn't cool you as rapidly but yes it does have an effect and there's one interesting study which showed that people who cold who, who took cold showers took less days off work sick than those their colleagues who didn't yeah i'm there's a, a page one of the my reference here, am I asking you to confirm this is on page 80 of your book, again, called Chill, uh, is the getting started. You, you cite an experiment or, a, or a, a, an experience where you took a group of high school students to Norway to do, you know, and, and the beginning of their cold water immersion activity as a preparation, you invited them to dunk their faces and hands, I think, into ice water. And I think this is a, if you're curious about this as a, you know, as someone who had, has not done this before, this is an interesting experience, ex sorry, experiment. Like you, you know, this is not new in pop culture, right? You splash some cold water on your face, you feel more awake and, you know, so, but doing that same action, splashing cold water or putting your face in an ice bath or your head in an ice bath that you just make in the sink with some cubes of ice and cold water, there you can experience it at a, at a small lightweight level and then you can extrapolate in your mind, okay, what if I did that? You know, what's the next level up from that? And even these basic activities you cite here in the study on page 80 of, you know, putting your hands in cold water, putting your face into an ice bath, ice bath that those interventions by themselves kick-started the participants' parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. Yeah, that's uh, that's the the theory. It's a bit difficult to tell with uh, you know. To, it, it's not that scientific, but it you know it does have an effect. And you know, I think this is, you, you kind of bring up a, a, another po important point here because you've got when you put your hand in the water, that is sympathetic. You know, that is the stress response, and that's the response you get all over your body except for your face. Now, you put your face in, so we've talked a lot about the sympathetic response and how you attenuate that by regular cold water swimming. But what you also get uh, by it putting your face in is it, it stimulates the diving reflex. And this is a parasympathetic response, so the rest and digest. So it boosts your levels of, of happy, relaxing hormones and reduces inflammation directly by Go, you know, it all goes through the via the vagus nerve into into the body. So, and it's interesting. Also, you should mention you know three minutes is is your thing, and that's kind of what I recommend. The reason being that if you say I'm going to be in for three minutes, chances are it's not going to be it's not going to be dangerous, and it will get you past that initial phase. You get first get into the water, and it's that ah, oh, and you know we're still getting that years into into the practice. But once you've got past that and you sort of, oh, yeah, now I can concentrate a bit and you get past the hyperventilation and things like this. So that three minutes works quite well. So you just got to stay in long enough that you get past that really bad bit. And uh, and then I also say, you know, put your face in the water three times. And again, don't just put it in and take it out. Put it in, wait for the worst to go past. It's a few seconds and then and then bring your face out. Yeah, the, I have, I'm obsessed also with sort of minimum effective dose, like where do you get the 80, 20 results? And sure, I might get, you know, inter, um, would that be incremental 
benefits beyond three minutes, but I get 80% of the benefit with three minutes that I would with 20 minutes. So that's good enough for me, mostly because I want to do this every day or, and or have made it a part of my lifestyle in the shower. And I don't want to take a 20 minute shower. I want to take a, you know, I want to take a four minute shower, one minute where I clean myself and then the next three minutes where I'm standing under cold water. And I think there's another piece of your your work here. Um, you talked to, you know, a little bit about in the Sarah stuff, you've talked about doing it with uh, your son, the idea of sort of planning for this. And I'm, I'm speaking now to people who are, they're still with us there, whatever we're, you know, 40 minutes in 30 something minutes into our conversation here and like, okay, I'm still intrigued. Um, you know, that the, we've tried to provide some, if the first phase is splashing waters, you know, so do you feel any more alive or better? Second is sort of, you know, maybe a cold shower, clean yourself for a minute and stand in there for as long as you can breathe through the things that you talked about. Third is like, you know, getting into a either cold bath or the sea, which is cold. Uh, the, the, I think the kicker is a commitment to doing it more than once. Yeah. Without and a doubt. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering if you can talk about sort of how people ought to think about at least like when you decide that you're going to do this, I'm going to take, say, I'm going to do this every day for a week and see if I feel the same, worse or better. Yeah. Would so, you tell me what you found in the research and what you recommend? Well, what you can do. So it takes about six, six immersions to get yourself to full adaptation. So you, remember, you've got two things here. You've got the adaptation, which is a long-term effect, and you've got the sympathetic stimulation, sticking uh, parasympathetic stimulation, sticking your face in, in the water, which is every time you go in, you'll get the benefit. And of course, every time you go in, you'll come out feeling great. So there we go. But the 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 studies where they you know they're using adaptation this is before we've been looking into it for its health benefits. They they used about six immersions to adapt someone to cold water. You can actually do that over the course of a day, as long as you warm up in between times. Typically, they did them over a week or six weeks. I think, it's, yeah, as you say, it's really important to commit to it. And I would say on that basis, six times, commit to six times. You don't need to do it every day for a week. Once a week, I have found works really well. And that's what our, our studies the studies here where we've been using it as a as an intervention we they were eight weeks but they were every week in fact we had one group which was twice a week and the rest of the groups were once a week we didn't see any difference and so that commitment is really important because the first time you go in is going to be really hard and you might you know, probably come out feeling good but yeah it's going to be, it's going to be bad the second time that's the worst you know, you, you, you kind of, well, I've done it the first time I was, you were psyched up and this time it's just bad. It's just painful. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's just awful. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's what I found with my son uh, here. Yeah, the second time he did it is like, I'm never doing it again, but, uh, the lure of extra screen time on a Sunday was too much for him or any screen time on a Sunday. <laughs> uh, and then the third time, then you start getting into it. Then you can, uh, then you kind of really get it. And so if you commit to six times and you commit to do it with someone else, again, you know, the studies, the feedback we have from the studies was that people didn't want to let other people down. And that sense of community is, was really important in getting them to come back every time. And, you know, and this, is, this is another benefit of the cold. You know, you can do it in a shower. You can do it in your bath. And, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, if you start being becoming part of a community as well i mean that's another benefit we know reducing social isolation is a you know, massive health benefit this idea of doing it with a with a couple of other folks is it is also there's an accountability effect right you you know you don't want to let anybody else down and you want to show up and even just sharing the stories whether this is with your uh you know a peer or a partner or spouse or whatever there's that that's there, that's benefit enough, but you cite the benefits of community and you also, you are clear in your, in your work that if you can get into a cold body of water that is in nature, 
that there are added benefits. You, you cited some of them earlier, just the feeling of one and connecting with nature. And it's just, a, there's a little bit more of a natural feel, not required, but we're looking for people who want to, or we're, we're looking for the things to share for people who want to go, go the extra mile. Um, yeah. And it helps, you know, if you've got that, yeah. that prospect, you know, that, that helps going out, you see, you know, we know it has further benefits, but like with anything, it's like the diet you can stick, you know, the diet that's good for you is the diet you can stick to. And the exercise, the, the the exercise you can do is the one you can stick to. And if you've got an exercise where you're out in nature and you have you're doing it with friends, and you know, when you come out, you have a real laugh. Yeah, everyone's laughing and sharing a hot drink and stuff like that. You know, that is the exercise you're going to stick with. Great, and I think it's fair to inject in here now. There is a difference between what we're talking about and inducing hypothermia, staying in cold water for 30 minutes, swimming. These are not activities. You, you know, I can't, I can say that I'm not a doctor. You can't say that, but like what we're coaching here is, and what, what your book is about is, you know, this repeated, um, uh, exposure to cold water as a benefit. And we want to distinguish this from, again, making yourself hypothermic over a long period of time, uncontrollable shivering, doing so without, you know, without others. And these are fortunately, you know, there's not too many experiences of people giving themselves that in their own shower or their own bathtub. It's much safer, but I just put, put that out there. We're not talking about hardcore hypothermia. That is, that would be, you know, way beyond the minimum effective dose. That would be essentially an overdose of what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. You know, it's like you go to the gym, you work out, you damage, you know, you have micro damage to your muscles. That's how your muscles grow. But if you pull a muscle, you've damaged it. It's the same, you know, and that's hypothermia is the body's equivalent of damaging a muscle. And it's really interesting. One of the studies we did, we looked at people having, uh, you know, people having colds over, over a winter and we compared cold swimmers and their partners and pool swimmers and their partners. And there was a difference between cold swimmers and their partners. The cold swimmers had less uh, upper respiratory tract infections. But what was really interesting was that if you looked at the, at the graph of incidents and severity, there were a few of the cold swimmers, the ones who all the cold swimmers who are in that little bit longer, I think the time was 15 minutes. I mean, of course it's totally variable on what the temperature is there were two or three of them who actually were worse and if you'd taken them out and just did the ones who are less than 15 minutes that effect would have been more pronounced of course there were two or three who were very hardy souls who could stay in less more than 15 minutes but you know i, I can't emphasize enough how how important it is not to stay in too long that dose that 80 percent you get after three minutes you know you're right you probably stay in much more than four or five minutes when it's sub 30, uh, well, sub 40 or whatever, you know, you, you start doing yourself damage. It's about dipping. It's not about, you know, a lot of exercise. And you think about it in terms of exercise, you're probably doing enough just walking, you know, like we do in Brighton, you're just walking down to the beach. You know, if you, it, studies have shown that walking up three flights of stairs every day, is enough to show a measurable decrease in cardiovascular risk. So you really don't need to do much exercise. Mm. Yeah. I, I, again, I was just floored at some of the, the research in your book around the benefits of po folks who chronic migraines, people who've reported suffering up to 28 migraines in a month, uh, debilitating. And there's millions of people disproportionately women, as I understand also, who suffer from that affliction. And your experience is that you can improve that condition with cold water. We've already listed, fibro, listed fibromyalgia. We've listed uh, anxiety and depression. Uh, I'm wondering, because you know I haven't cited any statistics from your work here, if you can talk a little bit more specifically about the, you know, we are in a different world. We are now 
based largely on the fact of how fast information moves and we are getting all of this information. We are biologically as a species wired for a negative bi bias. So there's, we're paying attention disproportionately to negative messaging. We're getting those messages tens of thousands of times a day, which is our neurology and biology. We're not necessarily meant it. So it's, it's not a stretch to say that as a culture, we are more stressed out, more anxiety ridden than even times where there were saber toothed tigers that were out there aiming to kill us. And we have a similar response in our body. So knowing that, that, you know, anxiety and stress are, uh, I may, this is anecdotal, but are, let's just say at an all time high. Can you talk about specifically the, cause I, I believe this speaks to the largest number of people. If you are overstressed at work at home, the combination of, you know, working through the pandemic, living at home and working and all, you know, all of the things that, that are these modern stressors. Talk to us about what you saw in people who suffered from sort of those afflictions and the benefits of cold water. Well, so the only study or the, the strongest study that we've done is the one on depression and anxiety. And we took people clinically diagnosed depression and anxiety, took them, as I said, you know, eight sessions. Is Sarah. Is no, no, Sarah, so Sarah was the first one. Sarah was our pilot as it were. And, uh, you know, she, so I said, I was really worried. I said to Chris again, I said, look, what happens if it, if this doesn't work? You know, before we you know, started, uh, started her off on it, he says, you know, because then that blows my whole theory out of the water. Beautiful research career disappears immediately. He said, don't worry, it always works on TV. So that was it. But what we need to do after that, of course, is take it a bit further. And what we did next in terms of depression and anxiety was run these courses and you know, these were people with clinical depression and they weren't on tv and what we found was that you know remarkable results really you know, 70 80 percent of them were cured so not just a bit better i mean if you look at the results for prozac you know ssris tablets you know like this you know possibly 40 50 percent if you're lucky show a response but they're not they're not clinically cured. I mean, cure is a bit a strong word, but you know, they were in the normal range after the after the course. And what was even better was that three months later, we followed them up three months later, there was still over 50% remained in that cured zone. So yeah, you know, wow. it's a really powerful thing. Yeah, if it was a drug, no one would believe you. Yeah, if you yeah. if you showed that kind so of let's just let's restate this. SSRIs serotonin something whatever reuptake, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors <laughs> inhibitors there you go yeah, that's right uh were 50 percent. i wouldn't even call them effective 50 percent had a response exactly and and cold water exposure was 70 to 80 percent reported not just a response but wellness yeah exactly yeah, and these people were people with like they weren't with serious depression, but they were clinical, you know, clinically diagnosed depression and and anxiety. So for those folks that are listening right now, and again, whether you're walking on a path or you're sitting in traffic on a subway, wherever you listen or watch this show, I want you to grok that data for a second. That is serious. And imagine if you know, and for those who suffer with it, I have managed about a depression in my life as a, as a part of that PTSD uh, from a medical condition that I had. <clears throat> it, imagine if, and so I, knowing that there are benefits there is heartfelt to me and earnest and exciting. And, you know, hopefully you're hearing this. And if you're suffering from any of that, that this is one course, this is not the only course of action you should be taking. But, and also imagine if you don't, suffer from that. You can imagine that there are still dramatic benefits if you are entering this procedure or these ideas or experiencing or experimenting with this. You don't suffer from that stuff. Imagine the upside. It is powerful. And you're listening to two people here, Mark and Chase. You guys are probably so sick of me talking about cold water. Um, but I just encourage you to uh, just think about that study for a second and how powerful that is. And I think there's another another really interesting thing came out of that study because a, a couple of the guys I talk about in the book, or yeah, more than that. So, so Mark, come back to Martin for example with his fibromyalgia. He went to 
he went along because of his anxiety. Yeah, you know, he was chronically anxious. You know, the fibromyalgia made him more anxious. He didn't go along for his fibromyalgia. He he just you know thought, well, I'll give it a go. And what he noticed coincidentally was that fibromyalgia uh, got better. And it was the same with Beth, who had the migraine. She she did something separate. I mean, there's a wonderful film of it. You know, she just thought, I've got to do something. Here I am in bed, twenty eight days a month with headaches yeah with migraines not headaches migraines yeah i've got to do something oh let's just get out in nature oh perhaps we could go swim in the sea it was no intention of helping her migraine which is why she went out but then she started noticing that it had an effect so these aren't people that we've tried to cure even had any expectation of it having an effect on their symptoms who seem to have you know, really reap some benefit. And so while we can't say we haven't got the studies to prove that it works, you know, I think that's quite a powerful indicator that there's something to it. Yeah. And I, one of the other things that I think is worth remarking, again, I'm going to share the title, uh, Chill, Cold Water Swim Cure, a Transformative Guide to Renew Your Body and Mind. Uh, it's excellent. It's, it, tell some great stories. It cites some of these studies that we're talking about. It's very, um, it's very consumable. And one of my favorite things about a, your book and B this practice in general is it's, it is virtually available to everyone. If you are able to listen to this podcast or watch this video recording, you have access to cold water. I'm not saying you have to live on the ocean, uh, but whether it's a city park, a lake, um, or you are near the sea, or you have a bathtub, a shower, or a sink, like the, the relative ubiquity of the you know access to this thing is one of the things that you know is a, it, this is a core value of the show, creating access to experts, to ideas. But it's also it's so it's so available to you right now. So I'm going to stop stop you know, convincing people, I'll just, I think I've gone, maybe gone too far. Um, but I want to thank you personally for writing the book. I think it's very powerful, very timely, you know, as we shared earlier, the rate of you know, anxiety and whatnot is, is, uh, incredibly high before we let you go. Cause you've been very gracious in hearing my long stories and these very complicated <laughs> multifaceted questions that I'm asking. Is there anything else that we haven't covered that you want us to know about cold water immersion as something that's beneficial to virtually everyone? I think what I'm looking at now and what I'm sort of quite excited about is its effect. You know, I suppose is, is it putting it into the context of lifestyle medicine? And you know, this is the way where... Yeah, you know, drugs are great. Yeah, you know, I couldn't do my job as a, an anesthesiologist without really, really good drugs. Yeah, you know, I use really good and really strong drugs every day, and they are fantastic. But there is what we've kind of lost. If you look back into the history of of medicine, what we've yeah you know, we 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 found drugs and they were really good. But you look back and you know in my own town of Brighton there was this guy, Richard Russell, who was using this therapy in the 18th century. He describes very clearly the kind of effects, you know, we're seeing now. But, you know, the drugs came along and we kind of forgot about this thing. And I think we need to remember it again. And this is, and this is what lifestyle medicine is about. It's about you know, reducing the need for substances. Yeah, you, know, you get that. You get your your natural high from the sea or from the cold water. You want better sleep. You want community. You want exercise. You want being out in nature. And yeah, and on top of that, the what the, the one thing I don't think we get from uh, cold water swimming is the uh, nutritional benefits. Yeah, because you're know, eating well is another thing. You know, bit of cake afterwards that probably doesn't count. But, uh, but but currently coffee, which is what I tend to have afterwards, is good for you. <laughs> At the moment, the theory is coffee is good for you. So uh, so I think it's really good to look at it in these terms. You know, it's a, it's a, as a part of an overall package. And, you know, it 
probably won't cure all your ills, but it can certainly help them. And, you know, there are things like you know, that we've had the pandemic. And one of the other things we've done is take healthcare workers out and you know, run courses for them. You know, they've been really struggling under the pandemic. And, you know, just getting them into the sea and allowing them to do that. And, you know, our feedback, again, has been similar to all the other things. You know, the other courses we run, these are people who are not clinically depressed. They're just having a hard time. They want to make their lives better. They want to feel better. And they do feel better as a consequence of getting into that cold water. And that, to me, is this umbrella of lifestyle medicine. Amazing. Dr. Mark Harper, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us, your new book, Chill, The Cold Water Cure, Cold Water Swim Cure. Um, grateful to have you on the show. I would love to stay in touch and check in with you as you continue this research. And uh, I'm always happy to <laughs> to be a subject. I'm, I'm a willing participant in any and all of this stuff. Uh, if you need someone to put themselves under cold water stress, I, I just continue to see the benefits. I'm grateful for your time um, and everyone out here in our community, I think will rally behind you and your new book. Um, congrats again. And thank you for being a guest. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Awesome. For everybody out there in the world from Dr. Mark and yours truly, we both bid you a good day and adieu.